Hi, so this week, Kohelis turns from despondency to despair. We discussed the previous weeks how Kohelis was pursuing an effort at understanding our situation in the world, understanding his efforts, and trying to, to see whether he could achieve a sense of satisfaction, happiness, and true meaning through those efforts. And none of the avenues that he had pursued, none of those efforts and pathways had ultimately been brought to fruition. They had all led to dead ends. And what happens when your hopes become frustrated and dashed? You turn to resignation. Everything becomes negative. You become despondent. You turn to despair. You give in. You give up. And you become resigned. And so now we're at Pasuk Chaf. We're at chapter 2, verse 20. And I, I turned to despair my heart at all the effort I expended under the sun. All of these efforts that I made toward achieving satisfaction, toward toil, toward pleasure, toward whatever it was, they all become negative now because looking back at them, turning back at them, I see them all now in a negative light since none of them brought me to the path that I was pursuing. Now let's examine these words. They're quite interesting. And I, I turned to despair my heart. It's the I, it's the person, it's Kohelis, it's the thinker who's looking back at the effort, at the examination, at the thinking itself. And those thoughts and those realizations are bringing his heart, which is his internal cognitive state, his emotional state, his thought processes and his feelings, his internal state, that's, we explained last week, that is his lev, his internal state. So it's the I who's thinking and looking back and examining what he's been doing. And that is what causes his emotional state to come to despair. The sabosi is also an interesting choice of words. There's a cute word play here. There's a, a double meaning to this word, as there often is. The sabosi can mean I turned around to face, I, I turned myself around, I looked back, I rotated, I revolved. It's a physical turning. So it's Kohelis looking back at his experiences, at his thoughts, at his efforts. And the sabosi can also mean I changed. And both of those things are happening here, right? Because he's looking back at his efforts and at his examination. And at the same time, that's causing him to change his feelings and his emotional and cognitive state. And so it, it, there's a double play here, um, which shows you both of these meanings. And as is often the case, the play on words and the poetry is there in service of the meaning. As you examine the grammar and the meaning and the use of the words, it gives you a better understanding of the actual message in the sentence. And that's part of the fun and the beauty here, because all of those things work together. Kiesh Adam, moving on to verse 21. Kiesh Adam she'amalo bechachma uvedas uvechishron uladam shelo amalbo yitnenu chalko for there is a man whose efforts are with intelligence and wisdom and with appropriate measure and to a person that labored not for it he gives his portion this too is senseless and a great evil so Kohelis had discussed in a prior verse how the fact that all of his efforts at satisfaction at wisdom and so on all of those can be frustrated at the last moment at the time of death when all of the results of his efforts, all the product of his efforts are turned over to somebody who may very well be a fool and may not follow the same path, the same choice that Kohelis did and may use these to a completely opposite end. And therefore there is some folly and absurdity in that situation. But now Kohelis is looking at the root of that and he's saying that actually there is something much deeper amiss and much deeper askew that's at the root of all this. The very fact that I'm the one who's expending all this effort and the product of that effort can ultimately be turned over to somebody who did not expend any of that patient effort and toil and applied understanding and wisdom. Such a person can suddenly find themselves the owner of all of the product of my own efforts. And that itself is the root of absurdity because when we think about what is a major component, what is a major root of meaning and purpose in this world. It's the concept of effort and reward. The fact that we expend effort and we're rewarded for that effort, that serves, that sets the framework of almost everything that we understand related to purpose and effort in this world and meaning even in a sense. 
And the fact that you can have one person who puts in all of this effort and puts in all of this apply toil and wisdom and then suddenly you can have somebody else who put in none of that achieve and gain and receive everything that the first person has worked at that is the root of much of this absurdity and senselessness the the fact that one person can put in all the effort and somebody else can receive all of the product of that effort that stymies the entire sense of purpose and meaning that's at the heart of all of this, uh, of all of this lifelong effort, and even if it might not be Kohelis himself, it can be one person out there in the world. It can be anybody. It's it's just a possibility that this could happen to somebody. That too is equally a problem. It doesn't matter that it can happen to everybody or to the person who's engaged in this pursuit. The fact that it can happen to anybody, that there's a possibility of it happening, that stymies. The sense of purpose that shows that everybody who's involved in this struggle at its root is missing some of this sense of purpose so the fact that it can happen to anyone means that there's a sense of purposeless and meaninglessness and senselessness for everyone now i want to show you one final beautiful uh fun little word game that's played in this sentence that brings out a lot of uh, the points that I've been making regarding wordplay. And it helps if you have a little bit of an understanding of Hebrew, but perhaps you can understand it even if you don't. And to a person who toiled not for it, he will give it his portion. So, the word yitnenu chelko, the word yitnenu, can be read both backwards and forwards. It could have said, Adam shlo amalbo yiten chelko, or it could have said, Adam shlo amalbo yitnenu, stop. So it, it could have said, to a person who toiled not for it, he will give it. Or to a person who toiled not for it, he will give his portion. The word yitnenu can be read both backwards and forward. Because of this unusual way that it's written, you can see that you can read the word yitnenu, he will give, both backwards, meaning to a person that toiled not for it, he will give it. He will give the thing that he worked at. Or, to a person that toiled not for it, he will give his portion. He will give the portion of the person who didn't toil for it. So, this makes you realize that you can read this sentence so that the portion that's being given can be read as being the portion of the giver. Or, you can flip it, you can move it forward, you can pop it forward to read it as the portion that's being given is the portion of the receiver. And so, there's this beautiful little word game that's being played in the sentence itself, where you can read the portion as belonging to the giver, and you could read the portion as having moved over from the giver to the receiver. And so in the wordplay itself, there's an illustration of actually what's happening in the concept that's being discussed. In the concept, the portion is moving from the giver to the receiver. And in the words themselves, you can read it as being the portion of the giver, and then moving over and popping into the receiver and becoming the portion of the receiver. So the word game, the wordplay, the poetry, and the words is illustrating what's happening in the concept and is illustrating the issue, which is that something that's, that belongs to the giver can actually move to the receiver. And so you can see how the wordplay and the word game is illustrating the concept that's being made in the sentence. And there are so many of these. There are these little word games and little word plays. There are more, um, more meta ones. There are, there, are, there, are, there are word plays in poetry that revolve around uh, the sentences and the chapters themselves. And they're very interesting. And what Kohelis did here was use the words and the poetry and the expressions in such a way that he makes you think about them. He makes you think about how he wrote them. He makes you think about what they mean. He makes you realize that there are many different ways to read them. And in reading them and in understanding them and in thinking about them, you begin to understand the points that he made and the depth of those points and the various ways that he's making you think about these different points. And doing that itself helps you understand what Kohelis is saying. And it helps you internalize um, all of these points that he's making. I'll see you next week with more about Kohelis.